everybody. Thanks for joining me. I'm Mike Drodis, Bible teacher and preacher, and you've tuned into my YouTube channel, Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. The rapture is coming very, very soon. We are fastly approaching that day when the Lord Jesus Christ returns in the atmosphere above the earth and evacuates the dead in Christ first, then the believers. There are many who are patiently believing and ready and watching for this great event. But there are also a large group of people who are mockers, scoffers, deniers. They decide that they don't want to participate in the rapture and they, that they would rather go through the tribulation period. They don't know what they're talking about. Nobody should want to go through the tribulation period. Now, we have discovered that when it comes to the promises of God, those who receive the promises of God receive it through the element of faith, through the element of believing. Everything that happens in the kingdom of God is by faith. Even our salvation is determined through faith in Christ, not through good works. Now, the last video I taught about these mockers and scoffers who will miss out on the rapture. I used examples in the Bible of people who, who mocked and scoffed the promises of God and they missed out on what God had for them. There is scripture for what I have to say. The first one I used was the 12 spies who were commissioned by Moses and God to go into the land, the land flowing with milk and honey, the land that God was giving to the Israelites. Go into the land. Spy it out. Look, make sure that it's everything that what I said it would be. God is telling them to go into that land and see how good it is. They did. And for 40 days, they spied out the land. When they came back, they gave an evil report. They said the land truly is one flowing with milk and honey. But, but there are giants, there are walled cities, and we look like grasshoppers in their sight. We can't take that land. We can't do it. They, they created an evil report, and they denied that they could have the blessing of God. They rejected what God had for them. They mocked God. They mocked Moses. They wanted to replace Moses. God pronounced judgment on them. He said, you will not go into the land. It truly is your land, a land flowing with milk and honey. But all those people who are 20 years and above, you will walk around in the desert for 40 years. And the next generation will go in and possess the land. They couldn't enter in because of unbelief. Second Kings chapter 7. I discussed this as well. The king of Samaria was surrounded by the Syrians. They were being besieged. There, there was famine in the city. Nothing could go in. Nothing could come out. The prophet of God came to the king, Elijah, and said, Tomorrow about this time, there will be uh, flour. There will be barley. There will be grain. And it will sell for just a few pennies. There will be so much. The man on whom the king leaned on, his chief administrator, scoffed and mocked and, and jeered and, and laughed and at, at Elijah and said, even if God were to make windows in heaven, this would never be. Elijah looked at that man and said, you will see it, but you will not partake of it. And certainly, just as surely as the prophet said, the next day, the siege was broken. There was grain right in the, in, in, in the, in the, outside the city wall. And the man who said, even if God were to make windows in heaven, he was trampled to death. He never got to partake of the blessings of God because he mocked, he jeered, he was in unbelief. You can think about the days of Noah. Noah, a man of righteousness, preached for maybe 120 years that there was a flood coming. He built an ark and he told everyone, all you have to do is get into this ark. If you don't, judgment's coming. No one got into the ark. They mocked him. They made fun of him. They probably laughed at him as he's building a big boat in the middle of nowhere, thinking that water is going to come out of the sky. Yet, when judgment came, it was Noah who has lifted to safety, and all those who mocked and jeered and would not believe the, the, the man of God, they missed out. That's the way it's always been in the Bible. Now, as we study the rapture, there's some things that we, we have to deal with. 
during the tribulation period, there are believers, there are Christians who are here during the, during the tribulation period. How do we explain that? That's always puzzled me. Who exactly are they? Let's look at a few verses just to, to uh, be on the same page. Now we're talking in Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. This is talking about the Antichrist and the two beasts and the mark of the beast. And it says in, in Revelation 13, 7, and it was granted to him, we're talking about the Antichrist here, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Now if the rapture occurred, how are there saints during this tribulation period. Then, Revelation chapter 14. I'll just give you three verses to explain to you that there are believers, there are saints of God on the earth during the tribulation period. How do we reckon that with the rapture? Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Are those, here are those who keep the commandments of God and faith in Jesus. Talking about these saints that are here during the tribulation period. And then, near the end of the tribulation period. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Then I saw the souls of those who have been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast nor his image. And had not received his mark on their forehead or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. These are tribulation saints who are alive when the mark of the beast is introduced. And they have rejected that mark. And because of their faith in Christ, they're beheaded. So how do we reckon these believers, these tribulation saints who are on the earth during the tribulation time? Well, there's only a couple of explanations. Do they get saved after the rapture? Is this, the, the, is this tribulation saint, somebody who after the rapture occurs, they decide to come to Christ? They come to Christ when there are no believers, there are no pastors, there are no teachers, there are no churches, there's probably limited access to a Bible, there are no YouTube videos. They're not going to allow these videos on YouTube during the tribulation period. Yet you have people coming to Christ. Is that what happens? Not only do these people get saved, they get so committed that they die for their faith in Christ. Yet before the rapture, they were indifferent. They didn't seem to care. Is that what these believers are? Maybe some of them are. Maybe some do get saved. They are on the fence, and they do get saved after the rapture. Let me explain to you very clearly. The rapture occurs before the great tribulation, before the trumpet judgments, before the bold judgments, before the mark of the beast, before all of that. The rapture occurs before that. God will not allow his children to go through this terrible wrath of God that's coming upon the earth. Yet there are believers on the earth during the tribulation. God doesn't want his children to go through that. Yet there still are some who are going to go through it. Not only are there believers, but they, they, they die for their faith in Christ. Who are these believers? Now, yes, maybe some do get saved after the rapture. Maybe there are some on the fence and they come to Christ at, after the rapture occurs, they realize there. But maybe... These believers are not new converts as much as they are those believers who prior to the rapture were the mockers, were the scoffers, were the rapture deniers, who didn't want to partake of the rapture, who rather go through the tribulation. Maybe this group of Christians that we're reading about is the very ones who didn't believe in the rapture, and because they didn't believe, and because they mocked, and because they denied the rapture, they were left behind. Now, I must express this. I'm not talking about baby Christians or immature Christians who don't understand much of the Bible. 
They have a saving relationship with Jesus Christ, but they don't study the Bible. They don't understand the Bible. They don't know about the rapture. If they have any idea about the rapture, it's a very small, minuscule uh, part of what they know about the rapture. God has mercy on those people. I'm talking about the hardened believer who rejects, who re attacks, who mocks and scoffs and tries to pull people away from believing in the rapture. Those mockers and scoffers, I believe, will miss out on the rapture. They missed the rapture because they did not believe. They were not ready. They don't even want to entertain the thought of a rapture, and they're not interested in going at the rapture. They want to go through the tribulation. So they get what they wanted, they miss the rapture, and they go through the tri tribulation. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, that I'm out of my mind, that I'm off my rocker, that I don't know what I'm talking about, that I need to read my Bible, that I'm preaching heresy. I've heard that before. But let's look at what the Bible has to say. Turn to Matthew chapter 25. As I come to a close today, I am trying to get the message to those people who mock and scoff and deny that there's a rapture. You need to change your thoughts. You need to change your mind on what you're, you're pro, uh, saying because you could be left behind. Look at Matthew chapter 25. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be like unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. There are ten virgins. There are, there, in this parable, these are all born again people waiting for the bridegroom to come. Now five of them are wise and five of them are foolish. The foolish ones took, took their lamps, but they took no oil with them. But the wise ones took oil in their, in, in their vessels with their lamps. And while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. Apparently, this bridegroom was going to come and invite all ten of these virgins, if they were ready, into the marriage supper. And they could, they could have a good time. They, they could be involved in this marriage supper with the bridegroom. So they were waiting. They didn't know when he was going to come. Five were wise and five were foolish. The wise ones had oil in their lamps. The foolish ones had their lamps, but no oil. The lamps represents revelation. All of them were saved. All of them were born again. But the foolish ones did not have oil. They were unprepared for the return of the bridegroom. What were they thinking when they were out there in the middle of the night with empty vessels, lamps with no oil? What were they thinking? Were they thinking, well, maybe he's not going to return. Or maybe he'll return when it's convenient for us. Or maybe I'm just seeing what's going to happen out here. Maybe they thought they were ready. And it turns out they weren't. Or maybe they assumed that regardless of what their, their mindset was, what their state of readiness was, they would go. Whatever, whatever they, they had, whatever their excuse was, these five foolish virgins, these believers, did not really understand nor devoted the time to be prepared and decided not to be prepared. So when the event came, they missed it. The wise were ready. They didn't know when, but they were prepared. In terms of the rapture, you don't have to understand all the verses, all the concepts, all the mechanics, or the timing of the rapture. You're not required to know any of that. But you should be in a state of readiness and preparedness and belief. If you don't believe, if you mock, if you scoff, if you're counter-rapture with your insults and your jokes towards those who believe in the rapture and to those who believe that there will literally be a catching away as explained in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Verses 13 through 18, the catching away. If you don't believe that and you're opposed to it, you're anti-rapture. 
you're insulting, you're a mocker, you're a scoffer, you quite possibly could be left behind. You will be, quite possibly, could be one of those tribulation saints who go through the tribulation, who reject the mark of the beast, and are beheaded. You could exactly go through that mess, and you don't want to do that. You don't want to go through the tribulation period. You have to repent. I'm asking you, if you're a mocker and a scoffer and a denier, consider repenting, asking God to forgive you. Tell him you don't understand exactly what's going on, but you certainly don't want to be left behind when the rapture event occurs. Consider this a warning so that so that you don't have to go through the tribulation period. It will be a terrible time of trumpet judgments and bold judgments, mass casualties worldwide. The environment will be polluted and, and everything will be terrible. You don't want to go through this. You want to participate in the rapture and the rapture is coming soon. So please consider this, what I say, as a warning to turn, to repent, to ask God to forgive you. Hey, thanks for watching these videos. Every week, I do one or two videos about the rapture, about end times prophecy, or about dreams and visions. If you haven't liked or subscribed yet, please do. If you have a prayer request, quest, please leave that in the comments below. I will pray with you and for you. And until next time, keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Are you ready? God bless you.